In the 1930s and the 1940s, the Jewish community was split down the middle. Some of you may, may remember the American Council for Judaism, Elmer Berger, who was against uh, Israel's being established. Many of you remember Rabbi Stephen Wise and Justice Felix Frankfurter, who would not risk their friendship with President Roosevelt to tell them the truth about what was going on in Europe. Many of you remember the New York Times owned by Jews who said, we have nothing in common with our brothers and sisters in Europe, and we will not report on the Holocaust, and we will not support the establishment of the state of Israel. It was a terrible, terrible time for the Jewish community because we were so divided and so powerless. And then everything changed. Uh, Israel was established through the courage and bravery of young people. I would say the golden age of Jewish unity around Israel was probably between 1948 and then really culminating in 1967 when so many of us feared another possible Shoah, when it looked like the surrounding Arab armies might literally engage in a war of genocide against the Jewish people. Things began to change in the early 1970s when the left, the hard left, turned against Israel, when the Reverend Berrigan started calling Israel a criminal community, and many people on the hard left turned against Israel, and many Jews on the hard left turned against Israel. Along came J Street, and J Street's goal was to weaken APAC. That was its goal, its express goal. It said APAC doesn't speak for us, APAC is your grandfather's pro-Israel group, and it appealed to young college students. And it appealed to young college students through deceptive practices, through telling young college students that it represented Israelis on the center left of Israeli politics. That was the ploy. And so many, many college students said, that's interesting. If we were Israelis, uh, we might support labor in Israel. We don't know. Uh, there's nothing wrong with supporting a group that represents a very substantial part of the Israeli population. The problem is that wasn't true. It never was true. And it became clear shortly after J, J Street came into existence. First, it was discovered who the founding funder was. It was George Soros, who nobody has ever accused of being pro-Israel, and who says that he wished Israel was not established as the nation state of the Jewish people. It was discovered that one of the founders of J Street himself had said maybe it would have been better if Israel had never been established. J Street is weakening both Israel's and the United States' position. J Street cannot call itself a pro-Israel organization when it takes views that don't reflect any view among Israeli leaders. If you go on a college campus and ask students what J Street's position are, they'll tell you about the settlements, They'll tell you about the two-state solution. They'll tell you about the occupation. And you say, but what about Iran? Oh, well, we don't know what their position is because J Street speaks out of both sides of its mouth. It states its Iran position to people who want to hear it, to people on the hard, hard left. And then when it goes on college campuses, it states its more centrist positions that do, in fact, have some appeal within Israel. It is absolutely deceptive in its approach. I analogize it to Jews for Jesus. They fool students, Jews for Jesus, into believing it's a Jewish organization. And J Street fools students into thinking it's a pro-Israel organization. In preparing for tonight's talk, I did something interesting. I went back and I read every single J Street press release from the first day of its existence. I could not find a single one of them that praised Israel. How can you be a pro-Israel organization and never express any pro-Israel views? It is absolutely shocking to me. Every press release seems to have a negative about Israel. The marketplace of ideas in America is open. And thank goodness for this film, because this film plays an important role in the marketplace of ideas. I want this film to be seen on every college campus to be seen by every student who's considering joining J Street. I want every member of J Street to see this film. Strength comes before peace. That's the lesson of the Shoah. We learned that. The Jewish people in the 30s thought that having a moral high ground would be enough to defeat the Nazis. That wasn't enough. We need strength 
If there had been an Israel during the 1930s and 1940s, they wouldn't have to beg the Americans and the British to bomb the rail lines. The Israeli Air Force would have bombed the rail lines. If there had been an Israel, the gates of Israel would have been open as distinguished from the gates of America and Canada and the rest of the world, which were closed. We need strength. We need a stronger Israeli military. Everything has to be stronger and better. That's the lesson the Jews have learned over more than 2,000 years. Elie Wiesel said, the lesson of the Holocaust is always believe the threats of your enemies over the promises of your friends. And Israel has to maintain its self-reliance, its ability to defend itself against all enemies, no matter how strong and no matter how threatening. And all of us here tonight watching this film and promoting this film will help make a stronger pro-Israel community. You are that strong pro-Israel community. Don't let J Street divide us. Be strong. Stay united. Enjoy the film.